Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe and this is the next episode in the Coding a 2D Game Engine in Java series. In this episode, we will be implementing sound. So you can see here that I have a bunch of buttons which are all the different sounds I've added to the game and you can click them to start or stop a sound and you can play several different sounds and they are playing through the engine. So this is a pretty big step in our engine because now we will be able to create a full game. We have physics, we have animation, and we have sound. So after this episode, we will actually start building the Mario game and we will see how we can build a game using what we have so far. Before we start coding the sound, let's just talk about it visually real quickly because there are a few points that I would like to consider before we just jump into coding. Before we start talking about sound, I'd just like to preface this with, I am not an expert in sound and I've done very minimal things with this open AL library that we'll be using. So we're just begin gonna be using it for the bare minimum to play a sound. We're not gonna worry about velocity, position, anything like that. Even though we do have those capabilities, we're not gonna focus on that. Okay, so now what are we gonna do to create sound? Well, we're gonna be use something called STB Vorbis, which uh, is an STB library for loading Vorbis audio, otherwise known as .ogg extensions, right? You may have seen that. And this is Sean Barrett, right? He's the same guy that we're using to load PNG, JPEG images. And he has developed some really great libraries. This is another one that we will be using. Then we'll be using OpenAL to handle our sound management, to play the sound, stop the sounds, and do all that fancy stuff for us. And the way I want you to think about OpenAL is OpenAL uses something called sources, which are very similar to OpenGL and the thing that we know as textures, <laughs> okay? So just keep this in mind while we're developing OpenAL sources is basically the same as OpenGL textures. And we're even using STB Vorbis, which is very similar to STB image, okay? So keep these correlations in mind because it will help a lot in your understanding of this. If you understand textures, this should be uh, breeze, okay? Should be very simple. Now, before we start working with sound, what do we need to know? Well, with sound, you have either mono or you have stereo or you have something higher than that, right? We're not going to talk about the higher levels of sound quality, but I want you to think of this like uh, with images, we have RGB and we have RGBA, right? This is a three channel image, this is a four channel image. Well, this is a one channel audio source, this is a two channel audio source. Basically, this means that if you were wearing headphones, this would come out of one side of the headphones. This would come out of both headphones, okay? Most audio that you listen to is stereo. I don't really see a lot of mono around anymore. This is useful if you're trying to do like uh, specific things with your audio, I guess, uh, play certain sounds out of one and the other. But if you're going down that route, you usually use a higher quality audio source. We're using like four or five speakers and uh, we're definitely not gonna go into that, <laughs> okay? So basically, we have one channel or two channel audio sources, mono or stereo, and uh, we're gonna be sticking with 16-bit audio sources as our format for OpenAL. Now, how does audio actually work? Well, I'll give you a brief overview of how we'll be using it. So when we call STB, what it's gonna return to us is this raw binary data in the form of an array, and this will just be our raw audio data, right? And this is just sort of, we could play through this if we knew how to interface with the lower level system functionalities, right? The operating system. And we said, hey, we've got this data, just play through it. But we're not concerned with that. Instead, we're going to use OpenAL to do that. So we sort of have to buffer this to OpenAL. And then OpenAL will manage this buffer. I believe it's on the CPU side. It's definitely not on the GPU. Uh, it could be. I don't think it is, though. I think this is all CPU based. But it will be very similar to how we use the GPU with OpenGL textures. And so OpenAL has this audio buffer, which is very large, and this is like our sound, right? So this is just one individual sound, the same way we would have one individual texture stored on the GPU. Except what OpenAL probably is doing under the hood is using something called a ring buffer. A ring buffer is just a small array, okay? And you have a certain amount of elements in it, and it doesn't go past that. This is a very large array, and it's kind of costly to be carrying this around with you. So OpenAL is probably doing some sort of synthesizing and everything to get all the audio into this one array. And then it tells the operating system, hey, this is the array I want you to play out of. Uh, this is where we are right now. And this is where we are in the audio source. So we're at the beginning of both. Then what happens is we just start copying everything from the audio source into here. 
And then once we hit the end of this audio source, since we're copying at the same time, we're gonna be playing. So then by the time we hit the end of the audio source, the audio might be right here, right? We're no longer here because we're playing. So then what happens is uh, if we're here in this array, then we just start copying this data back over to here. And then once we get to here in the audio, the ring buffer, we just loop around and we continue playing. I'm not confident this is how it works, but I'm guessing this is probably how it works because that's how most sound implementations do work. We don't have to worry about any of that though. All we have to worry about is uh, <laughs> pressing play stop with open AL. That's how simple it will be for us. We do have to worry about one other thing though, which is the concept of a cursor, right? So this is sort of our cursor and we want to say, hey, we want you to start here, which is zero. That way we start from the beginning of the file. And then if we play, then this cursor will start moving. And then if we hit stop, we might be right here. Then if you want to replay the sound, then you would have to say, hey, set the cursor back to zero and then just play through again. The last thing I will mention is if you remember, we had something called GL texture parameter I or something along those lines. And this was our GL way of saying what things we want our textures to do, right? Uh, min mag filters. So like, what do we want to be blurry or pixelated? And we would just sort of set those data and we could do multiple parameters. Well, uh, OpenAL has something similar called AL source I, <laughs> okay? And this is why, like, keep in mind, textures and so sound sources, they are very similar uh, the way OpenAL uses it. And that is for a reason, so that it's easy for you to understand. So uh, we can basically set different sound source parameters, like the volume, we can set uh, whether it loops, we can set other things among that, okay? So uh, basically different sound options are what you can place here. If we were doing velocity and stuff, I believe that goes through here too. Not completely sure on that though. Anyways, this is the basics of how this will work. Let's go ahead and start coding and see how this actually works. Very quickly before we start coding the sound, I do want to mention, uh, I noticed a bug while I was experimenting with some things. And if we go into IM GUI layer, we should be doing the same thing we're doing for the mouse listener as we do for the mouse scroll back, right? We should say if io.get won't capture mouse and all this stuff, just to make sure that we're not scrolling if we're in one of the IM GUI windows, right? So I just copied this from the mouse capture and IM GUI layer down to the scroll so that we're only scrolling if we're uh, in the game view window. We're only sending that to the game. So that's kind of simple, but just want to get that out of the way. Now, the first thing we'll want to do is go to our window class. And this is something that I did forget to mention inside the drawing, but it's not a big deal. Uh, to play a sound, you need an audio player, right? So you need some sort of source to play your sound through, which is the speakers. So we need to get a handle to that. And in order to do that, we'll just sort of create a couple of long variables here. We'll call this our audio context and we'll have our uh, long audio device. Okay. And these are two things that are just used by OpenAL and they make it very simple to use. So we'll go do it down to our initialization stuff. And right after we make the window visible, we'll set up our audio context. So uh, we'll just initialize the audio device here. And I guess you could do this anywhere. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you do it before GL create capabilities because that's probably a good place to do it. And we'll just say string default device name. So whatever default output device they have set, uh, that's the one we will use is ALC get string. And we'll say device handle zero. We'll use ALC default device specifier and that should get us the default device. So then we'll just say import static content and we will also import this static method. Okay, so that just tells uh, OpenAL to get us the default device name. Then we'll say audio device equals ALC open device and we'll do default device name. All right, so now we have a handle to our audio device and now we just want to set up our audio context. So we'll say int attributes equals zero audio context equals alc create context audio device and attributes so i think you can set up different attributes it's been a while and i don't remember exactly where i followed this tutorial to get all this information from i'm guessing it was just from open al's website but basically you can set up different attributes for your audio device and so we're just saying hey our context is using this audio device with these attributes and we're saying we're not using any attributes and just setting that to empty then we'll just say LC, ALC make context current, and then we'll use our audio context. Then we want to say ALC capabilities, ALC capabilities equals ALC dot create capabilities. So just like we create our OpenGL capabilities, except we need to pass in the device that we're using. 
and then we'll say al capabilities al capabilities equals al dot create capabilities okay and then that's where we pass in the alc capability so uh i believe this is just like the device and then this is uh open al and we want to change that to al not alc and then we'll just import that and change that to al as well and we'll import that and we should be good cool then we just want to say if not al capabilities dot open al 10 so if we don't have uh, the audio library, it's not supported, then we'll just say assert false audio library not supported. Which you may want to check and see like what the minimum version they support is and everything just so that you know what your minimum specs are. I'm not completely sure, but I think they go back pretty far, so you should be fine with OpenAL 10. Okay, then let's go up to the run method because after we finish running our game, we just want to make sure that we destroy the audio context so we will just say alc destroy audio context or destroy context uh, audio context and then alc close device audio device so we destroy the context and close the device and we've basically released all that management if you forgot to do this it's fine because the program's exiting right now anyways and so the operating system would automatically free all that memory and release all the devices that you grabbed a hold of so it's not too big of a deal, but it's good practice. Okay, so now we want to create a sound, right? How do we do that? Well, let's go to not components. I'm going to put this in Jade uh, because this isn't actually a component that we will be using. It's an asset, right? Just like a texture isn't a component, it's an asset. So is a sound. So we'll go into Jade and create this sound. And I guess you could create a whole audio package and stuff, but oh, I'm not going to go that far. And we'll just say private int buffer ID. So just like a texture has texture ID and all that stuff, we're going to have a buffer ID and a source ID, okay? And then we will have a private string file path, which is just the path to this documents file. Then we'll have a Boolean is playing and we'll initialize that to false. And we'll have a public sound string file path. So the file we're taking it from and whether it loops or not. And this is all we will need. So right here, we'll say this dot file path equals file path. And then we're going to use STB to load the audio file. Okay. So the way we do this is uh, first we have to allocate some space so that STB can give us information like how many channels we have and stuff. So we're going to allocate space to store the return information from STB. So we'll say stack push, which uh, basically will manage our memory force automatically so we don't have to free anything. And then we'll say int buffer channels buffer equals stack malloc int one. So we allocate size for one integer. And whoops, we don't want to create that. We want to import that. So we allocate size for one integer and this stack push basically ensures that when we pop, uh, this will be freed. So we won't have any memory leaks. Then we'll push one more thing onto the stack because we also want to have a sample rate buffer. So we'll use that and we'll say stack malloc int size of one and this should be lowercase u then we're going to use stb to load our stuff right so we'll say short buffer so buffer of shorts raw audio buffer equals stb vorbis decode file name and we're going to give it the file path and we're going to give it the channels buffer and we're going to give it the sample rate buffer and i believe that should be it let's see if this works out we'll import this and that is all we have to pass in. I'll go ahead and just move this to a new line so that you guys can see this whole thing. You got to love STB and OpenAL and all this stuff because this is pretty complex stuff that we're doing here and we can do it in just one function call. It's really nice. Okay. Anyways, we'll check and see if we uh, succeeded. So we'll say if it's null, we didn't succeed. Then we'll just say system.out.println could not load sound plus file path plus a quotation. And then we'll just say stack pop, stack pop to free up that memory that we used up and then we'll return, import that and we should be good. Otherwise, if we did succeed, then we want to retrieve the extra information that was stored in the buffers. We can do that very simply by saying int channels. So this is the number of channels, mono or, or stereo is just channels buffer. 
dot get. We have one integer in there. We just need to get the first integer and the sample rate. Uh, so this will tell us, you know, how many samples we have and we can just do dot get there. Then we'll free that memory. So we'll say stack pop, stack pop. Then we're going to wait. Oh, and this should be a sample rate buffer dot get, not channel buffer or channels dot get. Then we just want to find the correct open AL format, right? This is just, are we using mono or stereo? So we'll say format equals negative one. If we have one channel, then our format is AL format open or mono 16. So we're just going to use mono 16 bit and we'll just import that. Then we'll say else if channels equals two, then we have stereo. We'll say format equals AL format stereo 16. Next, we're going to create some space to hold our audio sample with open AL. So we'll say buffer ID equals AL gen buffers. This should be very similar, right? This is basically like OpenGL. And then we'll just say import that. Then we want to buffer the data. So we'll say buffer data, 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 doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I'm using GL here. This is AL. It's so similar that it's starting to confuse me too. Okay. So we'll say AL buffer data. And then what we need pass it is the buffer ID. Then it says format, right? This should all be very familiar to us, which we just got. Then it says the byte buffer. Well, that's our raw audio buffer, which is a short buffer. That's perfectly fine. And then the frequency, that's a little bit different, but that's just our sample rate, which we got from STB. Then we want to generate the source. This would be like generating the texture, right? We just buffered the texture data, really sound data. Now we want to generate the texture, which is our sound or our source. So we'll say source ID equals AL gen sources, right? So we generate one source. Then we're going to set our source parameters or like our texture parameters, right? So say AL source I, source ID, AL buffer, uh, buffer ID. So that's, we're saying, hey, we're using this buffer uh, for these parameters. Then we'll say AL source I, source ID, and we'll say AL looping is, uh, did they say they wanted looping? We'll do a one, otherwise we'll do a zero. One is true, zero is false. So whatever you pass in, we just sort of set it. And we'll say AL source I, source ID, AL position. So where is the cursor at? We're going to set that to zero for now. AL source F, source ID, uh, what is the gain? And I'm going to put this to 0.3F. This is sort of like the volume, right? And one thing I'm going to note too is with textures, we set all this stuff at the beginning. I don't believe you can change it because then you have to generate the texture. With these, you can set this anytime. You don't have to like reload the sound and everything and repeat this just to get a different gain. You can do this at runtime and we'll see how that works too in a minute. Okay. Anyways, after we finish all this, we want to free the STB raw audio buffer. So we'll just say free raw audio buffer. Okay. And we'll import that from just hit import static method and that should work good. I'm not sure which library it's importing it from. Okay, so that should load the sound and everything and very similar to the way the textures work. We're going to also create a delete method so that you can delete this memory if you're done with it. If you switch scenes or something and you have different sounds, you'll want to delete all the old sounds. So we'll say AL delete buffers, buffer ID. That's all you have to do. And I believe you also have to do AL delete source sources and then we'll do the source ID. Okay, so delete the source, delete the buffer. We should be good. Uh, as you can tell, I don't use the delete because I usually only have one scene. So yeah, uh, then we'll make a public void play method. Uh, we'll just say int state equals al get source i. So this is where we're sort of using it at runtime, right? We want to see if it's playing first of all. So we'll say we want to get what the source state is in. So are you playing? Are you stopped? Whatever. We'll say if state equals al stopped. So the sound has been stopped. Then we'll set is playing to false, just so that we know it's not playing. Then we'll say AL source I, source ID, AL position, zero. So this is that cursor I was talking about. We're just resetting it to the beginning. And we're doing this at runtime, right? We're not reloading the sound or anything. We're just setting it right here. So that's important to recognize. Then we'll say if it's not playing, then we need to play it. And we'll say AL source play, and we'll pass in the source ID and then we'll say is playing equals true. 
So basically what this is going to do is it's just not going to play it. So if you hit play twice, it's not going to start playing uh, the same sound because what will happen is it'll just sort of do nothing, right? <laughs> so we're checking to see if it's stopped. If it is stopped, then we'll restart it. But if it's not stopped, then we'll just let it continue playing and we won't really do anything. Uh, stop method is going to be a little bit simpler. So we'll just say public void stop. We'll say if it's playing, we don't need to check anything because we're keeping track of that. And then we'll just say al source stop source ID. So we'll just stop the sound and then we'll say is playing equals false. And then finally, I'm just going to create a getter method, get file path, return this dot file path. And we're going to create an is playing method. So public Boolean is playing. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated. We're just going to say state equals al get source i like we did just up there. Source id al source state. And then we'll say if state equals al stopped. So literally the same thing we did up there. Then we'll say is playing equals false return is playing. Okay. So we basically just want to make sure that if it is stopped, then we know it's not playing and we'll make sure to send that to whoever's asking for it. Okay. How do we get these sounds into our engine? Well, these are assets. So let's just go to asset pool and we'll have a private static map of string to uh, sound here and we'll call the sounds equals a new hash map. Okay. And we will just import that. We should be good. I'll go to the bottom here. And this should be pretty familiar to you by now how we do this. We'll just say public static sound, get sound, string, sound file. Okay. File, file equals a new file, sound file. We'll check and see if it exists. If we have it, if sounds.contains key, uh, file.get absolute path, then we'll return sounds.get file dot get absolute path. Otherwise, if we don't, then we'll assert false sound file not added just to let us know plus sound file plus that. And then we'll return null if we did not have the sound added already, then we'll create an add sound function, which just says public static sound. So it'll also return a sound and it'll just return whatever you sent it in case you ever want to use it for whatever reason. <laughs> And then we'll pass in the file and we'll say whether or not it loops. And I'm just going to copy this little bit right here. If we have it, we just return it. We don't add it again. Otherwise, we want to create a new sound. So let's say sound equals a new sound. This takes in the file path, which is our sound file. Or actually, we could just use file.get absolute path. And then whether it loops, which is the looping. Then we'll say asset pool dot sounds dot put file dot get absolute path and we'll give it the sound. Okay. And then we'll just return that sound. There we go. Not too difficult there. I'm going to do one more last utility method that we don't have with any of the others, which is return a collection of sound, get all sounds. And this will just return this dot sounds dot values. And we'll go ahead and just imp import that. And I guess we can't use this because this is a static context. Uh, that way we can just get all the sounds when we're using IM GUI to iterate through all of them uh, pretty easily. So inside of the level editor scene initializer, we'll go down here and we just want to add in another tab. So right here, I'll say if I am GUI dot begin tab item and just call this our sounds. Then we'll just say collection of sound. Our sounds equals asset pool. I get all sounds and we'll just import collection here. That should be good. Then we'll say for sound, sound and sounds, uh, file temp equals new file. This is just that we can get the file name, uh, instead of doing the whole file path, which is a little bit cumbersome. And then we'll just say, if I am GUI dot button, uh, we're going to do this very simply temp dot get name. So if they click on the button, we'll say if the sound is not playing, then sound.play. Otherwise, sound.stop. That way, if you click it and it's playing, then it'll stop. And if you want it to play, then it'll play. And then we'll just go down here. We'll say if I'm GUI.get content region available X is greater than 100. So I just sort of eyeballed that and said 100 should probably be good. We'll do I'm GUI.same line. So we'll just sort of put the buttons on the same line until we have no more room left. And then we'll move to the next line. Okay. Now if we hit play, we should get our sounds, which we do. 
and we're gonna get an error because I forgot to say I'm GUI to end tab item imported okay if we go back there now and hit sounds we get no sounds because we didn't add anything so <laughs> I'm not gonna put you through the agony of watching me add all these sounds instead I'm just gonna copy and paste them so let's go up to our uh, load resources and right after we load all the images I'm just gonna load all these sounds which you can find at the github link in the description and this is just all the sounds we'll be using so if I rerun that and we hit sounds then you can see we get all these sounds and if we hit play then we start getting the sounds play all right so now we have sounds added to our game we'll actually start building Mario in the next episode since we have all the basics here uh, so we'll start implementing a uh, player controller and everything so that when we hit play, we can actually start moving around and the animations play at the right time and everything. Uh, yeah, so the game engine is in a good place and we're almost finished with the series. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.